Did you know that when infected fluid that's called pus builds up in your belly, it can form an infected pocket that's known as an abdominal abscess? Now, this collection of pus is your body's response to infection, and it can make you really sick if it's not treated promptly. In fact, if you leave it untreated, it can lead to life-threatening complications like sepsis, which is a really dangerous condition where the infection spreads throughout your body, which without sounding too dramatic could even kill you. Now, abdominal abscesses can happen for various reasons, many of which are beyond our control. But the good news is that recognizing the symptoms and signs early and getting treatment can usually lead to a full recovery. Now, in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into what causes abdominal abscesses, as well as the symptoms and signs to watch out for, how they're diagnosed, and the treatment options that are available to you. We're also going to cover what you can expect during the recovery period and potential risks if the condition is left untreated. But first, let's dive in to explore the causes of abdominal abscesses because there are quite a few. So abdominal abscesses form when bacteria, or in some cases, parasites invade your abdominal space and they cause an infection. Now this often happens because of another medical issue that allows these germs to enter the abdominal space. So for example, if your appendix bursts, the bacteria that usually live in the gut can spill into the surrounding area, leading to an abscess. Similarly, a perforated intestine, which is a hole in your bowel, can leak out bacteria, causing a really serious infection. Now, other conditions can also lead to abscesses, things like a burst ovary, a perforated diverticulum, which is a small bulging pouch in the digestive tract, often found in the lower part of your colon, or infections in organs like your gallbladder, the pancreas, or the ovaries can all cause abscesses to form. Inflammatory bowel diseases, so things like Crohn's disease, can also trigger chronic or long-term inflammation, which can in turn increase the risk of infection. Now, in some cases, the infection can even spread to your belly from other parts of your body through the bloodstream. And whilst a cause is usually identified, sometimes an abdominal abscess can develop without any clear reason. So you are more at risk of developing an abdominal abscess if you've recently had abdominal surgery, you've had trauma like a serious injury, or if you've got a weakened immune system. Certain conditions like perforated ulcers, which are open sores that form in the lining of the stomach or the intestines, can also increase your risk. So now we know a little bit more about potential causes, well, what are the symptoms and signs that you need to watch out for? Well, the most common symptom of an abdominal abscess is persistent pain or discomfort in your belly. The pain might be localized, meaning pinpointed to one area, or it could spread across a large portion of your abdomen. It usually ranges from sharp and stabbing to dull and achy, and it often gets worse over time. Now, depending on where the abscess is located, you might also feel pain in your lower back, your chest, or even your shoulder. This is called referred or radiating pain. Now, aside from pain, other symptoms of an abdominal abscess can feel a lot like having a really bad flu. Now, these often can include a swollen belly, diarrhea, fever, chills, nausea and vomiting, and you might lose your appetite, which could lead to weight loss. You might just generally feel really weak and rubbish. Now, in some cases, people may also develop a cough, which can make it tricky to tell where the problem is, whether it's in your belly or if it's somewhere else. So now we know a little bit more about some potential symptoms. Well, how are abdominal abscesses diagnosed? Well, because the signs and symptoms of an abdominal abscess can be really similar to those of other conditions, your health provider is going to want to run several tests to confirm the diagnosis. They'll likely begin with something called a physical examination where they look at you head to toe and then they ask you about your symptoms. Now, to check for signs of infection, your doctor might order a complete blood count or full blood count. Now, this test looks at things like your white blood cell count, which will be elevated if you've got an infection. And additionally, they'll look at other blood tests to check how well your liver and your kidneys are functioning, because an abscess can also affect these organs too. Now, imaging tests are another really useful tool that we can use to help diagnose an abscess. And the imaging test could be an abdominal ultrasound, an x-ray, a CT scan, or even an MRI to get a really detailed look at what's happening inside your abdomen. Now, out of all of these tests, I'd say the CT scan is the most commonly used because it provides a pretty clear picture of the abscess and also helps to guide treatment. 
Now, in some cases, the doctor might also use a needle to extract a sample of the pus from the abscess. Now, this will help identify the specific bacteria that's causing the infection so that the right antibiotics can be prescribed, but this is not always done. So in terms of treatment, well, once an abdominal abscess is diagnosed, treatment really focuses on two key steps. Firstly, fighting the infection, and secondly, draining the abscess. So antibiotics are usually the first line of treatment. Now these medicines help your body fight off the infection, and you'll usually start with what we call intravenous or IV antibiotics in the hospital. These are antibiotics that will go through a drip, usually in the arm. Now, after the infection starts to clear up, your doctor will switch you to what we call oral antibiotics, usually tablets, which you might need to take for several weeks, typically four to six weeks in total. Now, it's really important to take all of the prescribed antibiotics, even if you feel better, to ensure that the infection is fully eliminated. But antibiotics are usually not enough alone. Most abscesses need to be drained to allow the pus to escape. And this can be done again in two ways. The less invasive option is percutaneous abscess drainage. In this procedure, a doctor uses imaging tools like a CT scan or even x-rays to guide a needle into the abscess. Now you will be given medication to numb the area that the needle goes into to keep you comfortable, which is called an anesthetic. Now once the needle's in place, a small tube called a catheter is then inserted to drain the pus. Now this catheter might need to stay in place for several days or even weeks, depending on the size of the abscess and to ensure that all the pus is drained. Now in some cases, surgery might be needed to drain the abscess, especially if it's in a difficult to reach area or if it's been caused by a burst organ like the appendix or the intestines. Now surgery might involve either a larger incision known as a laparotomy or a smaller, minimally invasive approach using things like cameras called a laparoscopy. Now the surgeon will clean and drain the abscess and they might leave a drain in place to continue removing the pus after the surgery has been completed. So the good news is that most people respond pretty well to treatment with antibiotics and drainage, but recovery can vary depending on the cause of the abscess as well as your overall health. Now, if the underlying issue that caused the abscess, like a burst appendix or a perforated intestine, has been fully resolved, you should make a full recovery, which is great news. However, some people may require more than one procedure if the abscess, for example, is really large or if it's difficult to drain completely. Now, there are some potential complications to be aware of, though. Sometimes the abscess doesn't drain fully or it might come back even after treatment. There's also a risk of a severe infection, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, spreading through the bloodstream, which can lead to sepsis, which is a life-threatening condition. So it's really important that if you have any of the signs and symptoms of a potential abscess, you see your health provider straight away. So that means if you have got symptoms like severe belly pain, fever that's very high, nausea, vomiting, or changes in your bowel habits, it's really important to seek medical attention right away because early diagnosis and treatment can prevent complications and help you recover more quickly. Thanks for watching and bye.